Want to know the difference between the IRR and the NPV in real estate investing? Well, if so, stick around because that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. For first dibs on brand new real estate financial modeling and career training videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell to make sure you're notified every time we release a new video. So if you're not sure about when to use the IRR or the NPV calculation, or you just wanna know the difference between the two, at the end of this video, you'll know the exact difference between these two metrics and when to use both in real estate investing. Now, I've taught over 10,000 students real estate financial modeling and deal analysis so they can land better jobs and do better deals. So if you're looking to advance your real estate investing career, you're in the right place. So the number one thing that you need to know about the NPV and the IRR calculations is that they're actually working off of the same formula. So to actually work through what I mean, let's jump into an Excel file and actually work through an example of each of these and how they work in real estate investing. All right, so we're gonna work through an example of this in Excel, and we're gonna work through how to calculate the NPV and the IRR in Excel, and how these are actually working off of the same formula. So let's start off by calculating the NPV or net present value of these cash flows. So what we're gonna do is use the NPV function in order to do this. So I'm just gonna type in equals NPV, and if I type in equals NPV, that returns the net present value of an investment based on a discount rate and a series of future payments. So the first thing that I need to do is select a discount rate. So the discount rate is essentially the required rate of return that you would need in order to make this real estate investment worth it. So if we were to get a 9% annualized rate of return on our investment, then in this case, what we're saying by setting our discount rate to 9% is that that would be a worthwhile investment for us. So we can set this to our discount rate and that's gonna be a manual input so we can change that at any point. And then we need to add our values. Now our values are going to be all of our future cash flows. So I'm gonna set this equal to everything from year one all the way out through year 10 and then I'll just close my parentheses here. Now the last piece of the puzzle is that I need to add my initial investment. So I need to add back in my initial investment, which is going to be a negative value, hit enter, and now I have my NPV of about $1.566 million, and I can get rid of these two decimal places. So that's my NPV. Now my NPV, if I test my NPV and it's positive, like in this case, that means that this investment at this specific discount rate is going to be worth our while. We're looking for a 9% annualized rate of return, and this is going to get us greater than a 9% annualized rate of return. Now let's look at the IRR. Now the IRR calculation is even simpler. So all I need to do is set this equal to IRR, and that's gonna return the internal rate of return for a series of cash flows. Now the IRR is just essentially an annualized rate of return on your initial investment. So we need to take our values, which in this case is going to be all of our cash flows, including that initial investment, and Excel is going to ask me for a guess. I actually don't even need to add that. So I'll close my parentheses and hit enter, and now I have my IRR of 10.95%. So that means that with these cash flows, we would return an annualized 10.95% rate of return on our investment. So how do these two metrics work together? Well, as I mentioned, these are actually working off of the same formula. And if you look at the textbook definition of the internal rate of return, the internal rate of return or the IRR is the discount rate at which the net present value of all future cash flows is equal to zero. So let me show you exactly what I mean. So if I set my discount rate to what my IRR is or 10.95%, so if I just copy this, and then paste my values into my discount rate. So Alt ESV to paste values, hit enter. Then what's gonna happen is you'll see my NPV is exactly $0. So you'll see the NPV is exactly $0. So these are actually working together. So you can think about a discount rate as essentially what kind of annualized rate of return you need to achieve in order to make the project worthwhile. So if you needed to hit an 11% IRR in this case, you'd set your discount rate to 11% and you'd see you'd have a negative NPV of about $40,000. So you'd know that you wouldn't be hitting that 11% IRR and that is set using the discount rate. 
All right, so now you know the exact difference between the IRR and the NPV calculations. But how do you actually build out cash flows and build out a real estate financial model so you can actually use these two metrics? Well, I've actually put together a real estate financial modeling crash course and you can grab it for free in the link in the description below this video. So definitely check that out if you wanna learn more about real estate financial modeling. Now, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with anyone else that you might feel would benefit from this information. So that's it for this video. I hope this helped you, and I hope to see you in the next video.